okay okay so yeah so let's do like persisting of the data and like have something that is being persistent somewhere so let's actually get to this point here uh index.js the first thing i want to do is the moment that i print something there I want to also to be able to clear it. Yeah, so the moment I do the submission, I clear it. And also I need to check whether there's something there before I add it. Also here before I add it to the list here. So let's, let's, let's get started. So that is where we add a list. Where was that exactly? I believe here, here, here. Here yeah, to do form on submit, then I want to clear the to do value or the element its value. That value equals to an empty string like that. So if I come here, say something like that, add, do that, add, then it's going to clear it too. So that's what you were supposed to do to create, nothing else. So that's about clearing. And now the next thing I want to check on is if we don't have any complete or we don't have any of these like there are no complete tasks there are no incomplete tasks or there are no tasks generally then i want to just display some message no tasks do something with that so i go to wherever i render my to do's i do render them here print to do to doc and I, here they are like now to do's items that's the one so I just want to make sure that this list must be greater than uh, something before I do something. So I'm going to say at this particular point here, if uh, to do dot length equals to zero, uh, just say to do items uh, plus equals uh, no no tasks uh, here, add some like that. Also, I'm going to check on this after the filter. So it's good that if I to take this one out and say, uh, let uh, incomplete underscore to do equals to that, then I can be able to say incomplete uh, dot map and also I can be able to reuse it here in my if statement and i'm going to check the length and make sure that it's not nothing close to zero and i'm going to say to do items uh to, is it to do items plus equals to no uh, let's say there are no incomplete to do's uh, let's say there are no to do's because we are dealing with the to do's then also we can do the same for complete ones so just pick that and move this function up a bit uh, up to this point and say these are the complete to do's there are no complete to do's then move the function and or the variable you see there so if i come here and say youtube add select youtube then it will say no to do here add some so add some like that so i have the first one in complete there but here there are no complete to do so we have taken care of the empty state of our application for example there's nothing then just do nothing just background noise is that from my side Jeremy maybe check if you have the background noise how can you be muted still talking that's funny okay who is having the background noise how when I put talk I said again on my side or it's gone okay so that's about the to do's now we have taken care of the null state i believe by yesterday like we had this like we could be able like to delete a specific to do like that 
but our lists, the moment we create them, we can't be able to delete them, though there was some functionality that was taken or that was to be used in deleting them. So why can't we add the delete functionality on our YouTube list here so that we can be able to delete a list? And at the moment we delete a list, we make sure that we deselect it if it's the one which is active. Yeah, so let's do that. So how can we delete a list? I believe we had a function, but we never used it in the right way. So this deleting a list, we can use indexes actually, so we can just say list position or seek list position. Let's say so. So in the list position, we are going to say, uh, just say this dot lists equals to this dot lists dot map not dot map dot filter and for each list uh, let's do the two list uh, with the index i just want to return a, a list so let's say just return whenever the index <laughs> don't match list position yeah so just return like that and i believe we have deleted that list easily and then the next thing we are going to do is actually maybe do something like check the active list to make sure that we don't so let's get the active list so const active list okay we actually have the active list currently so i can just check this one and i say if uh, this dot active list index equals to that then what we are going to do here is just first we are going to unselect or unset the active list like that yeah just unset it if it's the one unset it before we delete it so let's see whether this one works and how can we use this function i just going to pull it out down to whenever we are writing our utility functions and say uh, console.log window let me delete the console log delete the extra space there and i will just go down where do we say deselect active lists there so function delete uh, list and i'm going to say it's going to take in a list position and at the end it's going to say app dot delete list based on this list position so we have the delete list function now we need to use it somewhere where we don't know the place but as i said we did use some um, utility functions for example this one's list item now we can be able to add more functionality to this list item easily without having problems then I can just do that do that and i'm going to do uh, a button uh, do that button and i'm going to say delete like that <coughs> and this button is going to take in some classes and also it's going to take in an on click listener so under this one we are going to call this function called the list list And it's going to take in the list item position or the, the list position. So that's the item dot item position actually, like that. So let's see what we have. So I add YouTube here. And we have the delete button here. Then if I hit delete, it's kind of uh, maybe working or not working. Then what we can do after deleting a list is we scroll up, 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 up. Where do we delete the list? We need to re-render these lists again. Uh, we it is it print to do to doc print uh, lists to doc. Then I need to call these other two functions here to make sure that we. Oh, actually, I need to reset the active list index here. This dot active list index equals to null. So that uh, we deselect and that then also we re render the lists again. Print the list to doc and 
actually I'm not going to set an active list index there let's try it out add delete now we have empty lists then go to print list to doc and check whether the list length is greater than zero then I can just say if um, this dot lists dot length equals to zero just say the list elements are plus equals there are no lists here there are no lists add some like that so we can say no lists yet add some but the moment we have youtube here and add list it will be youtube select youtube we have youtube selected delete youtube we don't have uh, youtube selected it will deselect everything so let's add youtube again and instagram instagram now we have youtube and instagram delete um, youtube remain with instagram and the things will be good yes somebody has unmuted something to say. you have something to say okay so we'll just continue I'm going to the index file now we need to actually style our delete button in order for it to look like these other ones let's add something here so in order for it to look like this other one done or delete so that we can be able to delete it so how can we do that one the good thing is that these buttons already have like we have already some styles given by uh, the the ones from the to do so I can just copy this styles from here move here and go down whenever I call my function my that is this function that I use as my generator function then I just add the classes here so if I we add some lists you notice it has that kind of styling but we only want to show the button if if uh, we hover not every time not every time the moment we hover over that that's when we want to show the button so let's achieve that so we know this is a list item then we can achieve that using style that says just find the list item like that then we have on hover where we can be able to say list on hover then uh, let's actually add some styling here that is the first one being displayed to flex and align items to center and just file contents to space between like that then I can be able to see if, to say for my button I only want to show it the moment one one hovers so I can just come here and say list item and we have a button within that say the default style of the display the default display is none but on hover the button should have a different display type that is display of block like that so we have css updated and everything is working as expected so whenever i hover over the list that's when it's going to show me the delete button if i select the list well and good it will select but the moment i delete it deselects the list and also resets everything to the normal way so the task of the day was to make our to-do application to be persistent for example i have the, these different lists here i don't want the application it could then i need to type up an instagram but in the long in the long run you will be missing like you are you are lists you can't really be doing that all the time so that's where backends come in and that's where data persistence and data storage comes in so like if you have, you have to think about how can I be able to make this data available either online to all users or to this specific user or once a user comes to this device they can access the same data in another device for example whatever we're going to achieve today is to persist this data in this specific device but in the long run that's where now you need a backend this data instead of it being stored in the browser or in this specific tab it can be stored somewhere else that is in the cloud online in a remote server so if i'm on my laptop 
or in my phone, I can be able to access the same data. So as I said, these things go incrementally and they complement each other for different and specific functions. So they rely on each other. So yes, uh, let's re achieve that. And maybe somebody with a question or anything to maybe nimenda mbio sana kuna kitu limis mahali when we were just doing to make sure that we have the deleting the deletes the deleting working and f and all of those okay so let me just do the persistence the persistency then maybe we, i do maybe welcome you in to do something ask some, some question so how about persistence uh, we want to persist our application the moment we create it we said uh, as we were starting i said i'm going to use this app name somewhere so i want to persist my app data the way it is and load it the moment we load the page how can we like achieve that in the possible best way so when we create a new app here we actually don't pass in any anything now what i want to do here is whenever i create a new app i want maybe to add in something like the local storage key what's a key and what's local storage so yes about the persistency now before I implement the persistence thing let's take a, a step back and talk about what we're going to use so that maybe you can understand why we need to use it so we are going to use something called the local storage. The Robin uh, can remember he did mention something. Uh, this name, which line is this? Render list title. How did it even pass to reach that specific point? He let your error. I don't know. So uh robin did say something like uh they, there are several tabs on top he on top of the dev console the the developer console here so what are their uses and so i said we shall cover them as we go on for example this one of sources it is it is just showing you the files or any resource associated to rendering this website for example we have the index.html this is our index HTML file that we have here. And also we have this other one here, that is the five server. Five server is the one making this website like a hard reload or have sort of an automatic reload the moment you do some changes. And also we have index.js. Index.js is now the file, okay, this one here. Then we also have um, this other one here, style.css. I believe this one is for something else. Or oh, it's our style. Oh, this is our style.css, yes. So this is our style. That's for the sources. And we have imported some from remote tools. For example, Google. Here we have used the Google's uh, font. And also we have, uh, okay, this one, I believe this one is for the video recorder. It's the one which has appended the audio devices here. Anyways, so today's uh, today we are going to look into is it application? Yes, application here. In the application tab, we have this storage. So this is going to show you the amount of storage you have used in all the available storage types. For example, we have the local storage, session storage, index DDB, cookies, and shared storage and caches. Yeah, all of these are storage. So this storage is going to calculate all the storage you have used so actually this amount a given amount per browser so even applications are limited to what amount they can use for storage so i'm just going to go through local storage is the first one and the local storage allows us to keep things specifically for this tab and for this url to be specific so if it's this url then it will read the local storage same with all the rest of the storage and the rest of the stuff actually including the background services that those includes the 
notifications that zenye unaona google inakwambia activate notifications for you to receive notifications whenever you receive a new email same with whatsapp turn notifications on for you to receive a notification whenever somebody somebody sends you a message so they are all linked to a given url so you can't like say this is going to be moved or used to another url no they are tied to a, a single path a single url so let's go down here to so local storage is the first one and currently we only have a single key that is log level silent i don't know which one is using this one but i believe it might be five server we have a session storage so local storage is kind of an open thing you can read everything there session storage is the same but it somehow helps you manage sessions separately for example here and when you load the page here at once this is called a session the moment I reload it again, that's another session. So, so just remember session storage is just to keep track of the sessions. And also we use session storage to keep track of the logged in user. So you can say session dot set, but that's more for you need to do it either from a backend or some sort of a, in your framework you do it there. So we use session storage to track the login status of a user. Also, we can do the same with local storage. Index DB is like a given uh, having a database running on your browser. I've not been using index DB like CJ to me asana. I think I tried using it once. I did it in the wrong way. It didn't work. But index DB is so good or it's good. For example, when you have this list of to-dos, it's good to use something like index.db to help you index all your entries. That is your list and your to-dos in, uh, in something that you can retrieve. And also index.db is used when you have data which you don't want like a query fetched all the time. For example, you might find something like WhatsApp using index.db. I believe it does in order to track the number of messages you have received in the last few minutes. And you are not opening my developer tools. It's easy to open developer tools with this. So just go to a new, try, a new tab and open developer tools. Then uh, load the browser, load the tab. There we are. And when you may log out, <laughs> Oh, it has actually done something called, uh, if I have developer tools open, it's sending me to a different URL, not this URL, web dot, meaning they have taken care of. That's a security feature. Like you totally hide, somebody can't read what you have done in your backend using developer console. So they have done it in a, great, in a better way. Uh, they redirect you to a different URL. But uh, other websites don't redirect you. The moment you try to open your developer tools, they deny and they tell you you can't open or they disable the right clicking on the page. So there are many ways to make sure that somebody is not reading your source code. That's one way of doing it. So that's what WhatsApp has done it. But I can remember time before they did that, some time back, you could just open the developer tools direct. Anyway, let's continue. So index DDB for WhatsApp can be used to store the latest messages. Since it's on Azitaji, see the moment you start scrolling up, then it will call the backend or the server to load more messages or the older message. But at least the last 20 they will be stored in index DDB for quick recovery. Uh, then uh, cookies also, we use cookies in security matters or for security purposes also. So here is where you usually find site tokens, site cookies, for example, the login cookies, they will be stored here. So you might find you using local storage to store just the user information, for example, first name and last name, session storage to store that session object, then the cookie to store the token, the real access token to your backend. So this cookie will be shared both to the server and 
to your browser so you can access them if you want but usually they are critical for the server so most websites set their login credentials under the cookies storage we have a private state token i have no idea what is this so let me just avoid speaking about it let me talk about cash so cash is the one that for example if i want to cache this website for quick loading then uh, the first time you call the website it will take some time but the most the next uh calls or the next day loads they will be loading from the cache then updating the browser or updating the ui with the time so cache is good uh in terms it's used widely used in uh social media applications such as uh, twitter or in other applications like stack overflow where you have these other questions so the cache is some part of the application not the entire thing but some part of it for faster loads for example they can cache their styles they can cache their javascript because it's the same through all the pages then it will help them just to load this content and apply the style from cache so cash i believe if you know about it sometimes you ask yango nambiwa clear your cash for your page to load again something or sort so that's the work of cash so let's go back to local storage and do something about it so local storage as i said it will help us keep track of our data so i can just come here and say uh local storage dot set item so whenever you are setting something um, to local storage or storing something to local storage what you need to know it takes into values this method takes into things for example the key and also the value they must both be in strings you can't say a value as a number it will be converted to a string you can't do an object it will be converted to a string so just remember you need to store everything as a string a key as a string and the value as a string so if i do that you realize we have our key value here in our local storage then you can be able to go ahead and say uh, console.log console.log local storage dot get item with that value of key so remember when you were storing something to local storage you use set item and when you are retrieving that value from local storage you are using get item so if i do that and go back to my console log you will see that something here says value i'm alerting index.js line 300 let me get rid of that line uh this one so whenever you use a set item the key and the value to retrieve that value you use the key get item key so and as we have another method called uh, clear which actually clears the local storage it's like cleans it so if i call that one then and i go to our application and I look at the local storage now it's totally cleared meaning nothing's there and then we have another method for local storage that is a uh, local storage dot uh is it uh yeah it's called remove item and the remove item takes in actually the key so whenever you did set the key there so let me comment out the clear one you set it uh, let me refresh the page so i was able to set the key on top of here but the moment i reached here i cleared it so the best way to look at and to that is maybe we go to the console and see the value before it was cleared here it is so then and, and later on it was cleared so most critical methods that you need to know about local storage the first method is the set item method the next method is the get item method and the last method is the remove item so this is common these are the common methods they are so called uh crud this means i can be able to create uh create something and I store it into a database i can be able to read something from the database I can be able to update that something in the database and I also can be able to delete that something so this will be appearing whenever you deal with the databases and the backend so 
first I create. For example, if a user comes to our website, they create their account. Create their account. The moment they come back or they go to their profile page, profile page, they are reading the information, reading the account information. And whenever they now they want to maybe change their name, change their email, change their profile picture, that is update. So let's say I want to change profile picture. This means I'm updating. And the last one, I don't want to have my account here. Just delete it. So some sites do offer this option of deleting your account. Deleting your account. And the others don't offer because of various reasons. So something like GitHub can tell you, just delete your account. Google does the same. You can delete your account. So most do offer the deleting, the deleting your account option, including the likes of Instagram, I have no idea. So you can delete your account, but this is a bad idea. Whenever you delete your account and everything just goes blank. So this is the same method that applies to all the rest. For example, if it's a to-do, I can be able to create a to-do, read a to-do, update a to-do, and delete it. Currently, we have employed this method. If you do recall, well, when we are dealing with our to-dos here, I can be able to say, let's create this list. Let's add that to do. Now that's the create method. Let's uh, read it. We are reading it because we can be able to see it. The next one is update it. Just click as done. That's updating it. Now it is marked as done. The next one is the, the delete. Delete it. It's gone. So CRUD, maybe you can cram it, but there's no need. Just know we have create, read, update, and delete. Those are the most common functionality of a database. Most common. There are many others, but these are the so common ones. So just cram them. No, don't cram them. No about them. So we have covered something about local storage. And I've said local storage, the most methods that we need to take care of are these three. And you can access local storage using window, the window object, window.localstorage, or you can just start by typing local storage. It's available to the window. So just like that, you have local storage, then call your method. Set item, get item, and we have the clear and the remove item. I believe up to that point we are good. Any other question about local storage before we do the implementation? Okay, if there are no other questions, let's let's now work on the implementation. So I said our application is not taking in the, and let me like reduce it up to the, uh, everything goes. So what I want to do is that the moment we initiate our app, I want us also to pass in the key. That's the local storage key. That is the app name. So that is the local storage key and I need to pass it into the constructor here. So I can just say local storage, storage key like that. So I want to use this key like to store our data whenever we do a read, an update. So let's create a method here. Update local storage. So whenever we change something, we need to update local storage based on the information that we have. So update local storage, it's a function, takes nothing. And what we are going to do is just say local storage dot set item. So we have these three things here. We have the lists, we have the active list index, and also we have the active tab. How can we store this information in a way that we can be able to retrieve it whenever we want to retrieve it? So one thing you could do is just come here and say uh, uh, const app data. Uh, let's do const app data. Now this is our application. We want to use an object, specific alone object. So I can just say lists equals to this dot lists. 
that's the first thing. The next thing is that I'm going to take care of the active list index. So I can just say active list index like that equals to this dot active list index. And lastly, we have the active tab, active tab equals to, or the value is this dot active tab like that. Now that we have our app data, you can go ahead and say set item. Uh, let me just initiate our local storage key here. This dot local storage key. Local storage key. Local mm, storage underscore key equals to local storage key like that. Then I can be able to read the this dot local storage key this dot local storage key comma so we have been talking about objects and arrays how can we convert this object into a string so that you can be able to store it into local storage so one thing we could do is just take this and do that and the local storage will convert it not in, not in its own but we might encounter an error here so that's why we need to really convert this information to a string. And the JavaScript gives us a, a very good a very good method using the JSON or the so-called JavaScript object notation. And I'm going to string file. I'll talk about JSON in a moment. Up data. So this data will be totally stringified into a string. Like we're going to be having any loose ends that will arise to errors. So what is this? What is JSON? What is JSON? So JSON is a JavaScript ob object notation. And this is JSON, actually. Let's start from there. Whenever we have been talking about arrays, an array is in JSON format. This object is in JSON format, except those are that's the farthest about JSON. An object that is this object, like this. Uh, object like this, that the one with curl braces and an array. But anything to do with functions, of course they are objects, but they are not they are not good for JSON. They are not JSON objects. So JSON objects are this, like this one's up to there. Uh, I don't know. So about JSON, it's for example, this information here, the one we said about the cut, up to this array, that is JSON. And this one I've said in full, it's called JavaScript object notation. This one is JavaScript object uh, notation. Am I right? I believe so. So, so that's JSON object notation, and it only applies to something like like those calibrations and arrays. The rest of the stuff is not JSON. So JSON only takes care of objects and arrays. Yes, a question. OK. Good, good to ask. So what's the difference between an object? A difference between an object, that is the one referenced by these curl braces and an array, the one re referenced by square brackets. Can they be used interchangeably? No, <laughs> they cannot be used interchangeably because they have different functions. So take an object as a single thing, like, Imagine of a person, take, yeah, a person is an object. So take a person as a, a single thing. What if you have several people? No, th that's not single. That's where arrays come in. Arrays are used whenever there's a lot of data, which is similar. For example, people are similar. Of course, they have different properties, but they are people, they are persons. So, so you can take a, an object as, a single person, a single person. But when you have a lot of people, 
a lot of people like this, then take them as an array. That's why I said when we were creating our list of people here, or our list of users here, I said the website users, this is a single user. You see an array in my base of objects, but you can place them sideways. Each can carry any. It's not limited like that way. So here I can just come here and say, uh, he, okay, I can just say like likes. Let me move this a bit there and remove it there. So what does Dalmas like? This can be an array, in fact. Uh, I can just say uh, football. I can say uh, basketball. So I can also say anything else, etc. You, you realize that uh, in this person or in this user object, likes is an array. So what does this mean? They, whenever we are using objects, we have keys and the values. Keys are always in string format. You can either decide to define them like that or just don't do. But in JavaScript, you can just leave them blank. But whenever you are writing pure JSON, pure JSON objects, let me just do a sample. So let's say this is users.json. Actually, it's a JSON file like that. Whenever I'm doing users.json, you won't find me, me, me doing like users equals to that. It will deny and I tell you this is not valid JSON. Yeah, but if I were to just do that and I try to add a new user here and I say uh, first name equals to Dalmas, you will notice something here. Already this one is in red. Now, this is the main difference between writing a JSON object in JavaScript in a JS file and writing JSON in a JSON file. So in JSON files, all keys are always strings. So you have to make that one a string. And not that that way, control Z, that one, double quotes. Single quotes going to work either. So whenever you are doing objects or JSON files, always use uh, double quotes for your keys. That's a pure string, double quotes. Don't use a single quote. And also it will take in anything. For example, it'll just come here and pass in my likes. There's no harm. Let me copy my likes from here. Like that. And paste them there. Also, you notice there are nothing, there's nothing called single quotes in JSON files. So everything should be in double quotes. Otherwise, uh, it will be in all in red like that. So that's why I was using a JSON object. Uh, I was using JSON to convert my my object here. Where is that object? I was using json.string file to convert this object into a string so that it can replace everything or it can add me the missing quotes and all that, all, all that sort of things. So just remember that. When you are doing pure JSON, and also we can just do like this. There are no leading or closings. Uh, you can't add a comma if there is no other object below it. So if there is no object below it, you can't separate it with a comma. So there are no like any randomly placed um, characters. Yeah. So it has to be pure and it has to be clean. So JSON has its own rules of writing it. The first one being no single quotes. And then the next one being where's your guess upper comma? If you are that's the last object you have in your list. And that's I said this is for a list. And the JSON, I said it can also be just an array. And it can just be an object like that. This one is also pure JSON. But in this case, this JSON file won't return a, a list. And maybe you won't do things like this. Yes, you can't do things like this. It's, JSON file can only return a single object. That is either a single array like that or just a single object. That's about JSON files. So you could also do your users here, then import them to your JavaScript file and read them. Use them as normal 
this one but let's use let's do the reading of files reading json files as a later thing for now let's focus on what we want to do so to answer your question in two simple words you can't use them interchangeably you have to use them where they're supposed to be used for example you cannot represent a user as an array if it's a single user just represent that user as as, in, as, in, as an object yes is your question answered All right, so we have update local storage as our first function here. I believe your question has been answered. The next function we are going to write to write is the read local storage one. So similar to this, but now the one that will be reading. As I said, we do all that. Read, write, read, read, write, read, write. So I'm going to say read uh, local storage like that. And then the read, I'm going to say just read uh so uh, read local storage and this function is kind of the opposite of this other one so let's say uh, we have the local storage key in fact so let's do use that one so i can just say const app data app data equals to local storage dot get item is dot local storage key so i've read my data but this data remember when we were saving it we were saving it as a string but we want this data as an object so we need to revert back the process as we stringified now we need now to find a method to unstringify how can we do that one so just take uh, let me say here lock lock data that's local storage data and const app data now reverting back we are also going to use json so json dot pass now to stringify an object or an array we use string file to convert it back to the original format that is either an object or an array we use pass json dot pass and we are going to pass the lock data so sometimes it's it's a good idea that you need to make sure that you have that local location lock 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 data otherwise it might be passing and doing nothing or it will rise with errors so we need to make sure that we have this lock data and it's best we just say if lock data if lock uh, lock data just continue with our function did everything and uh, just come here and say this dot uh, lists equals to app data dot lists uh, this dot active active list index equals to app data dot active list index then this dot uh, active tab new tab equals to this uh, not this but rather app data but uh, active tab of course like that so what i've done here is like reverse engineering whatever we did in the first place so we have these lists here then we need to populate them whenever we read local storage so and here we go down and i can just say after we have done that, I can say this application to this point, it should work. But something else, we have created these functions, update local storage and read local storage, and we have not used them. So we need like to put them some, somewhere so that they can be used and they can perform the logic they are supposed to perform. But before that, as I said, we actually can check if there's local data and do this or you can also do this if you are aware. Instead of writing your logic in that closure, just say if there's no lock data, that's using the exclamation mark, just return. And if there is, continue. It's the similar thing, but in this case, we have just reduced. Instead of writing all our code in the curl braces like that, 
you have just done the reverse way. So you could do the reverse way, do this other way, but it's good you you avoid like doing this all these things. If you only need to check for true or false, you can just return at this particular line. Yes, I did explain about that one from the other also from the other classes. So we need to use our functions. So let's use them, see where the errors are, and if you have questions, then you can ask. So copy the function. The first thing we are where we are going to use it is whenever we activate a tab, <laughs> I want to actually do the storage thing. Whenever we activate a tab, do that. Whenever we add a new list, also like update local storage, I want it updated. Whenever we delete a list, do the same, update local storage. Whenever we add a new to do, do the same, update local storage. Whenever we update a to do, update local storage. Whenever we delete a to do, update local storage. And whenever we set an active list, also do the same. And whenever we unset, do the same. Whenever we print, nope, we don't have to update local storage. Whenever we print also, we don't have to update local storage. Whenever we are rendering, no, nothing. You're not going to update local storage. But whenever we are activating active list, we can also update local storage. Yeah. So I've used update local storage whenever we are doing a few things, creating, updating, and deleting. That's that we have used update local storage. Though this kind of sounds funky, like updating local storage after every read and after every update, not read, after every update and create, or after every delete, it might be not be the best way or the optimal way, but when we are starting, that's what we do. Just update local storage whenever we do an action to the data. Whenever the data changes in any way, update local storage. Now, we have one more function to use. That is uh, read local storage. Where can we use this read local storage? Now, we don't have to use this read local storage every time. We only want to use it once. And if I may ask uh, people, just a question, where do we need to use the read local storage? Let's see. Anybody with the news? <laughs> So, you are going to use read local storage when you are loading the application in the first time. So, that's where you will find some classes, and in most libraries and frameworks, they will have a method called init app or init. So, this is like initialize, initialize app like that so i'll just leave it as initialize that is i'll just leave it at init then at this init method i'm just going to call this dot read local storage like that so this method has only been used once and to make sure it's working i need to initiate my app yes yes Yes. Yeah. So what read local storage does, or why we need to read local storage whenever we initialize our app. Oh. Okay. You can go ahead then. So you didn't explain it well. <laughs> oh, if I can use an example of cookies. 
so yes that's good so let's say you have set cookies or when a user was logging into your site let me go down here though cookies is a long a long met a long thing to work on so let's say login this is a method that you have in your application that logs in a user so what we do here is we can just say cookies is it cookies uh, Where is it? I will not even I have an idea go up. <laughs> yeah, that's really tough. I like using Google. So how to set cookies using JavaScript. So it will be easier if you do that JavaScript cookies and then W3 schools will be our help today. So let's just quickly know the, the right method. So you don't have to cram, just know that thing exists. When you want to use it, do more research about it. And uh, hey, network in Yamut and Ben and Gumbil. See at the end of Guana Namina. Yes, could. Yeah, it's actually not really working. So uh, here document dot cookie. Oh, they are in the document. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, so cookies uh, exists under the document. So yeah, okay. So here you can set a cookie that is the username. For example, here we usually say the token. That is the access token. Let's say access token. Like that equals to some value. So you do a comma, then you set the expiry of that cookie. You need to set the expiry of the cookie. 16 milliseconds. Uh, yeah, here it's actually this is the thing. And also the part of the cookie. Yeah, you need to do all this. I said the cookies is another thing you can take a whole like two lessons to get to. So yeah, so when whenever you call document, uh, you call the function login, it will go ahead and set this cookie access token. So let's maybe roughly call it login and see what happens to our application. So I'll just walk right to cookies. Uh, you see it has set an access token here and whenever you don't pass in the path the path that's the last option here path if you don't pass in the path it will take the current path that is this path that is the url there that's what it's going to take and also if you don't set the expires it will never expire so you need to set a cookie and set when it will be expire so that whenever that cookie has expired it's no longer in, in the document then you can say this time or this user has logged out and also it's the same thing you need to do in setting and also in resetting the cookie it kind of takes long but it works the same as local storage it's a long story because it has more things to take care of so just learn about cookies or we shall cover them as we go on but for now let's just make sure our app works Okay. Yeah, but John will remain. So John said it as we started the class, so I really can't say no. And we can't really alter that one. Yeah. So,
So let's say now let's add the first list that's YouTube and add no. The moment you have added YouTube, you will realize it updated something here. And if I click on that and look at our lists here, you will realize that we have YouTube here. Now, if I reload the page, nothing is happening. Why is that the case? So let's let's like now the back. So I'll just walk right into our init app. We have read local storage method. And let's maybe do const or uh, oh, not const but console.log the log data like that. So the moment I have console log the location the log data is that we have uh, yes yeah something I did miss here so we did call our local storage here okay we did read something from local storage and we did update our our values yeah so we have the read local storage here it is it was called but something else happened so i set this data correctly but now one thing i didn't do is i did update the list did update the active list index the active tab to whatever the values were but something that i didn't do is re-rendering the data so whenever i read local storage i need to re-render the data again in order for it to initialize co correctly so we had a few render functions. That is the first one being um, actually the first one is a uh, print list to doc. We have print to do to doc, and also we have a um, render list title. Also we have activate active list. And yeah, so those are the few methods that we had. So let's like work on that. So whenever we read the local storage, we need to call the other functions in order for them like also the, they be called and they work out. So we'll just come back here. And now I'm just going to call them. So the first one is this dot. Uh, is it a, a print to lists, print list to doc? That's the first method. The next one is print to do to doc. And the other one is, uh, is it this dot render list title? Do you take anything? You don't? Yeah, so those are the methods that we have. And there's one more thing like, uh, is it, was it to activate a tab? Activate tab, activate tab method like that. We don't have activate tab. Yeah, app dot activate tab. Yeah, also need to activate the tab, but this one it's taking in the tab ID, and okay, we can just pass in the tab ID. There's no harm. So activate tab. That is activate okay this dot activate the tab and then we are going to just call or pass in this tab that we get from this other app from the app data like that or whatever the tab that is on top of here so let's let's see what we have so youtube has been rendered and all has been activated but it has not oh we didn't uh, like uh uh, select an active list here so let's say youtube was active like that and i reload the page you realize that youtube will remain active except now we didn't like uh, activate youtube on the other side then it means we need to activate also the active active set active list was it activate list or uh, render list title activate active list 
yes we have activate active lift here so i'm just going to pass it here just below the activate before i'm just going to say this dot activate active list like that so if i reload the page you will notice it is it has like activated youtube but if we head instagram here insta come like that and we also had something like maybe twitter list like that then we have all those i can be able to just say instagram add some to do's some to do and another one some other one then the other one i just mark it as done a complete like that now it's done in complete we only have one and in complete we have that if i reload the page you'll notice it will remain in instagram and the complete stuff but if i do twitter in all then and reload the page it will just remain twitter and all meaning now we have the capability of persisting the data across if we had all those to do's and all the rest of the stuff everything will be totally persisted and if i were to delete this twitter list like that remain with the two reload the page we shall have the two that were remaining uh, if i were to deactivate anything and reload the page everything will be just be good um, any question about persisting data so lastly i want to give you this app for those who are going to use it in their daily usage and you might ask why are we extending yeah we might extend because we started 20 minutes late yes we have more 10 minutes so <laughs> kindly bear with me because this i can't say let's move it tomorrow because it's something that we can do right now and close with it so the last thing is about uh this code i want to share this code in a way that you can also get it and also you can visit a browser or somewhere and you can use it so how can we do that and in this case i'm just going to use the common boy called github so i'll just walk into github.com yeah so Rovin has actually helped you to call that go do github we did a video on github Nimref, so you can take your time go through it and uh, at this particular point i'm going to my one of my organizations purely life software developer and i'm going to set it there so you will bear with me here my network is kind of sluggish so maybe I ask myself why are you guys getting everything I don't know. So we'll go to live software developer. Number one and attend if you can done. Okay. So this is one of my organizations. Then I'm going to create a repository. Yes. Yeah, just create a new repo. Uh, in your account, create a new repo. Hmm. So I've done public here for my my repository, and I'm not doing anything else. Just create repository. That's how you create a repository. The repository name, set it to public or private. And there are use cases where you need private or public. So, good. okay, in our code here, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to open the terminal and just close the server we don't need the server oh, oh i can't end it that way with a zima evil we open terminal and in the terminal i'm going to set up github quickly like do these things so if you didn't follow the first video or you didn't get something you can use this quick thing here so i'm going to initialize git in my repository or in my project folder and the git has been initiated you can't see it here but if you were to go to your 
Yes. Okay, that. <laughs> okay, you need to take long because we now appear network young city. But what I can say, I can't really be able to understand. That. Okay, so about GitHub. No, I'll just keep. I'll just keep things simple and keep them as I was planning first. So, because I didn't say like, I'm just going to go through Git. See, not deeply, just up you do. So I said, when you do, or you want to share your code, that was from the first tutorial of, from the first class. When you want to do or share your code in the best way, as developers, we use GitHub mostly, though, there are other tools out here that is preferred by different organizations. But for our use case here, is somebody having some echo? Somebody is echoing me back. So for, for our use case here, we are specifically using GitHub as our code management tool. Or the best term it's called a version control tool GitHub is a version control tool. Yes, there are, there are others which are maybe organization specific. So the moment you go to your GitHub account, just find whenever you can create a new repository. Don't find an organization as I did. So so just in your profile, not in your profile actually, uh, I'll just go back here. We'll just go back right to github.com. So you will land to this first page here. Then you can be able to see a few, like this is your landing page. And the most critical thing you can be able to see here, new. So you can click on that new button. All right, the network is doing that thing. I have no idea I'm born in a funny hero. Anyways, let me just continue because of time. I'll just continue it from here. When you get up, then you go down. It can change so. So whenever you initiate a new organize repository here, actually to ask the account. So I said I went to a lot of stories instead of I could have done this. So you will, by default, you'll only have your account. So just select that one and do the repository name here. Usually repository names match the project name you are doing. That's why I say I did to do app. Otherwise you could do something else, project X, whenever your project is. After you have done your repository name, you can either set it public or private. What's a public or a private repository? A public repository is available to everyone like anyone who is searching through Google can find it. Or and whosoever you share that repository link, they can be able to find it or see it. But a private repository can only be accessed to those who have been added or number one to the owner or those who have been added to the repository as contributors. So for example, if we are developing a simple, the same project, me and you, then we will be both called contributors. So it's like the ones who are developing it, the devs who are behind the project. So only to, available to contributors. Yes, that's for a private repository. And then you just go down and create repository, nothing else. Uh, so that's when you hit that create repository, you get your page yourself into this and it will tell you git in it. It will give you some process procedure here, but I will not follow the procedure as fully as it's given. I'll just modify it a bit. So you have only seen me use git in it. So that's what I used here. The first command, git in it. Then the next uh, command I'm going to use is um, not given here. So let's do that one. That is git add 
dot like that. So git add dot is going to add all these files into git like git put um, start tracking them. For example, right now they are all like in green. But if I were to do a new file here, for example, readme dot md, that's a new file or whatever we use to describe repositories. I say hash uh, uh, the best. Best to do up uh, use this app code to make a robust working a scheduling application. So whichever the whichever you are going to use here, so that's my readme. If I were to come back to my command line and I say git status, you will realize it's telling me readme is in red, meaning it's not, it has not been tracked. Then I can just say git add dot like that. I will clear my command line. Then after I have added all the, the files to git, like I've put them somewhere, I'm tracking them, then I can be able to go ahead and commit them using the this command called git commit minus m. So git commit minus m uh, full uh, to do app in HTML, comma CSS and the yes. 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 So the git commit minus m is minus m is the commit message. It's good you use commit messages. You could just say git commit there and leave it there. But the work of git, this git commit messages is if you commit a message like like that and you add something else, maybe another file or you edit something, then you can just say here new file dot html. Let's say you did write your HTML there, like that, and you said some HTML. Then you can be able to say the same git commit git commit command, but you could change the message to something here and say added new file, and you can even just say the file name that is was new file dot HTML. That's how git commit messages work. But I'm not going to run this one because I don't want to commit this new file or to add it to GitHub. Local machine. Yeah. So the next one, I'm going to call this method or this command here, git brand minus m main. I do git brand minus m main. So what's the work of this one? This one is going to change the default or the main branch of my application, my GitHub repository. GitHub repository is organized in terms of branches. So for example, you can imagine this as the main, as the main, the stem, the stem of a tree. And the rest of the branches or the other branches, they can be called as leaves or the branches, of course. So that whenever you are working or working with the other developers, you won't be committing, all of you, you won't be pushing your code to main. You'll be pushing. You will be pushing your code to your your branches. You are just your branches. You are different branches. Then after you have pushed it, pushed it to your branch, then you can call or merge the branches or merge to the main branch. That way, you will allow people like work on different aspects of the same application and they push to the same uh, repository. And at the end of the day, if somebody is pulling from the main branch, then they can be able to read the entire source code from all the developers. So I have converted my main branch or the main branch of my app, my repository to main. The next command I'm going to take is this other command, which is says git remote add origin. I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to paste it here. I'm using control shift V, but feel free to paste like that. 
so this one is now the one that is linking or saying this re, uh, um, this remote git this dot git folder here is linked to this specific uh, repository in github that's the command that says git remote add origin that's now the origin there so hit enter then it will add the remote origin if i say git remote minus v it's going to give me two the origin that is this one the one for fetching and also it's the same for pushing so that's about adding the origin and finally i need to say push i push like this so it's going to push my code from here yake github there we go so our code has finally pushed sometimes if you you might encounter errors here it didn't push it didn't do what but if now i come to my browser here or oh, about the errors if you get an error just uh, try to read it through and see what's causing the error the good thing is that github has been there in existence for long so you love just your your you are error resolved quickly using stack overflow so you can see the commit message here saying full to do up if i click on that commit message you can be able to learn more about whatever was changed for example this one everything was everything is new but if you click on different commit messages you can be able to oh we went to this app and changed this specific section that's the work of commit messages so to track what was changed at a specific time now you can see you can be able to see that our application is online finally the last thing i said is to make this application available to you to use so that is if i go to the github settings i needed to make this application like uh, available so i'm just going to say uh where is it is it pages so i can come to the in the repository go to the pages tab on the left sidebar then what i'm going to say here is deploy from a, a branch like that and i'm going to select the branch that's the main branch just select root don't select docs and hit save so it's going to upload uh, reload this page and say github pages source saved so you can be able to say that if I go to this page, where, 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 is, it, where is that URL? <laughs> you are really angry for what you are now. Let me just find the URL and uh, actually it's building that's why i don't see the url <laughs> so let's reload it because it was just html and css it should have given us a url here let's see Ati? anyways it, it, yes So they changed the JS pages. Okay, CG, but uh, I think let's let's go to pages actually in e pages. So yes, yeah, it was building actually, yeah. So it has been built. Now that's the application. So if you want to use this one, I can just share the link. And right, if I reload my YouTube is here, select it, uh, do something do that uh, mark has done reload the page now i have a working application then uh, here we go
So I'm just going to say live to do. That's the link. So if you just hit that link, you will get whatever I have. And finally, I'm going to share the link to this repository. Here we are. So if you want to download the source code to learn through, you can also do the same to do up. Any questions up to that particular point? Just to go ahead and test out the application. There's no harm because you'll only be testing it on your own, on your own browser. So whatever you put, you type, we don't know. All right. Yeah, so you can go ahead and test out the app because it's there with you or the website. Then maybe you could. Uh, so, what I, I just want to ask you is re redo the application because we have covered a lot. For example, today we have covered uh, something critical that's uh, how to use local storage specifically because local storage can be used in many instances so kindly take your time to go through and maybe learn how that work that works so if there are no further questions but just ask any question about the application we have finished the application actually so we can uh, end it here